Hello and welcome to a series on graphs. Well, I'm very excited to see how this series will pan out. Graphs are of course, you know, an intermediate to advanced data structure in computer science. It is something that is definitely not for the faint of heart, but what I'm going to try and do is I'm going to try and simplify the concepts as much as I can in my usual style, and hopefully you can gain something out of this series. At this point, I want to give credit to three of my professors who have done a lot in helping me understand all these concepts through their lessons. So credit goes out to Dr. Stephen Harlem, Dr. Leong Hong Wai, and Dr. Rahul Jain of the National University of Singapore for their excellent coursework. So ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, let us jump right into episode 1 of Graph Theory. Hello and welcome to the very first episode of Graph Theory. So basically what we're going to do in this episode is I'm going to give you a very rough introduction to what graphs actually are. And well, throughout the rest of the series, we're going to just slowly build our knowledge bit by bit. Graphs is a very big field. And in fact, I only know just a small part of it. So I'll only be able to teach you what I know about, but hopefully that's enough to give you a general impression of graphs in general. Today, we're just going to give ourselves a very basic understanding of what graphs are, and we're just going to have a little hint about how they are actually applied in the real world. You see, a graph looks something like this. In a graph, there are vertices and there are edges. Basically, the objective of graphs is to express a problem as a set of points, and these points are connected in certain ways, and by visualizing our data in this manner, we try to use efficient algorithms to find out certain things about the data. That is of course a very abstract definition, so let's try to make it more concrete. And one favorite example that everyone loves to use is Facebook. Just imagine this, Facebook has millions of users. So if we were to store them, say, in a giant array, we'll have problems finding out even the simplest of things. For example, we want to find out if these two people are actually friends. Well, if you had an array, you have to do some kind of a search. And while there are efficient ways of doing a search on an array, but when there are so many users and possibly so many people doing such searches at the same time, all that computation is going to add up. However, if we were to express the whole friend relationship as a graph, then really all you have to do is to follow that line to find out if these two people are actually friends. So yeah, basically that's what a graph looks like. Now, in addition to just points and edges, we can also express certain other concepts. For example, in certain graphs, what we can have are directed edges. That will imply somehow that, you know, we can only move this way and not the other way. On top of that, we can also give the edges edge weights. So for example, if we were to use a graph with edge weights to model, say, a road network, we may be implying that some roads are easier to pass through than others because of congestion. So you see, graphs are very versatile. They can be used to model many problems, even though on their own, they're not very interesting. In fact, while we're here, let's consider several other interesting aspects of graphs as well. And let's start with what is known as a path. A lot of the time when we model a problem as a graph, we may want to find a path between two nodes. So what exactly is a path? Well, as its name implies, it is just a set of edges that connect two nodes. And because we're dealing with, you know, the abstract concept of graphs, a path can actually be a finite or even an infinite set of edges. As long as ultimately it connects the two points we're interested in, well, that's a path for you. We extend the concept of a path to a concept of a cycle. If our path starts and ends at the same vertex, well, what we get is a cycle, because it is a closed loop. And really, the reason why I've just told you about those two things is so that I could segue into what is called a Hamiltonian path. Now, this is interesting, and in fact, it's one of the problems that, you know, comes up from time to time when discussing graph theory. You remember those little puzzles you've seen in your childhood where basically you're given a set of points, and your challenge is to use a pencil 
and draw a single line which will connect every single one of the vertices. Of course, you cannot revisit a point that will make things too easy. In fact, you are doing a graph problem because that line, a line that visits every single node once without repeating nodes, is called a Hamiltonian path. So yeah, while being instructional about several definitions, I hope I have also you know, awakened a little bit of interest regarding just graphs in general. We're going to try and keep this episode quite short, so in fact, I'm going to wrap up this episode here. Thank you very much for watching, and until next time, you're watching 0612TV. Thank you very much for watching. If you like this video, consider checking out the rest of my work on my channel. Alternatively, you may want to check out a playlist of the other videos in this series. If you'd like to show me some monetary support, I am on Patreon. You can find a link to my campaign in the video description. Of course, you can simply like this video or leave a comment. I'll be sure to respond as soon as I can. To keep in touch with my future uploads, do subscribe to this channel. And for even more updates, check out the official Twitter account for this channel at 0612TV. Thank you for your support.